Well, it's a very special edition of Off Air today because we were at a home away from home. Did I say that right? Yes. Okay, I'm with Sir Nolan. Now, people may not realize that you've actually worked with so many incredible artists. How did you get your foot into this industry? When did that start? Hmm. It took a while. You know, there's no real right or wrong way to do it and whichever path you take is your own and mm -hmm. um, you have to commit to it. Uh, it's a lot of zigzagging as you go, but I started, came here, I didn't know anybody. I started by reaching out on social media to some people. Um, I did a lot of internships uh, at various different companies to kind of get the landscape and I think it's important to understand different pockets of the industry. Right. Uh, so that when you're, when you figure out what you're going to do, like be a producer or a songwriter, you kind of understand how the labels work, how the mm -hmm. management side works. So I did a lot of internships, which helped a lot. You did these internships already with your talent, essentially. Like you were already kind of producing your own stuff. I was producing like, on, on the side, trying to figure it out, because yeah. you move here too, and uh, you don't really know where any of the songwriters or producers or artists are. A lot of them <laughs> like, are where do I find them? Yeah, a lot of them are <laughs> in their caves and, you know, making music all day long and you know, a lot of the studios don't look like studios. You really don't know what's going on. So For you sure. have to get out there and meet people. And, you know, doing the internships was a great way to kind of insert yourself. Uh, mm -hmm. The other way was just reaching out on social media. My first publishing deal was um, one that I had got by just reaching out, called to a couple songwriters that I really admired, that I had met uh, or at least heard of via my internships. And who was that? Uh, Nasri Atway and Adam Messenger. And they called themselves... The Messengers, okay. and they had done records with Chris Brown and Justin Bieber in the early days, and they were just a couple great musicians that we really got along and kind of developed a relationship. It's interesting that you you say kind of like that it's important to get the lay of the land and mm -hmm. different and in, in the industry that you want to work in because I feel like and not to poo poo millennials because I am a millennial, mm -hmm. but I feel like the mentality nowadays is so instant. We want everything to happen instantly for us, and yeah. it. It sometimes does happen that way for people, you know, but sometimes it, you do have to put in the hard work and network and build your foundation, so to speak. And that sounds like it's what you did, right? Yeah. And uh, it's a marathon, not a sprint. It's kind of cliche, but it's true. Yeah. And uh, everyone, it's easy to compare yourself to other people mm -hmm. because we're all doing the same thing and everyone's running around trying to uh, get records with the same artists and meetings with the same A&Rs and executives. But uh, everyone has their own path and it takes their own time and uh, it's, like I said, it's a marathon, not a sprint. So it's good For to sure. have patience. What is your creative process? It varies. Uh, I'd say a majority of the time what happens is an artist or a songwriter will mm -hmm. come to the studio here uh, and we'll kind of talk for a while, get to know each other if we don't know each other at all, or if we do, we'll just catch up. The best songs come from real experiences, I find, because it allows the fan to really understand and have a window into what the artist is going through, mm -hmm. and uh, it also allows the artist to have um, to share with their fans what they're going through and they can connect that way. How hard is that for an artist, or even you to do, when it comes to making a record, like, to tap into that personal, like, Cause not, I'm, I'm assuming that not every artist can do it right off the bat. No, it can take some time. Everyone's guarded in their own ways, especially yeah. if you don't know them, and especially if they're a big artist. You know, they have their walls up a lot of times. I know. I mean, I can relate to that. I talk on the radio every day, and right. we essentially have to share our lives, but I still have a wall up, and I still hold things back, and yeah. maybe it would be more beneficial if I didn't. Who knows? Hmm. But I feel like TMI sometimes. <laughs> sometimes, but I think uh, being a good producer is about being a good editor. And my job a lot of times is to be uh, someone that can listen and interpret and then present. So you tell me what's going on in your life. Mm -hmm. I can understand. I can try to boil that down to the root and uh, maybe help sculpt a concept that a lot of people would really relate to, but that also relates to what's going on in your life. Yeah. And then create a track, a song that people can hear. So it, it kind of goes in this little chain. Do you come to them with the melody or like lyrics already or do you work on that together? It depends, really. Sometimes I'll have the concept or an idea. A lot of times I have musical ideas that can set a tone. But again, when an artist comes in, I want to hear what's going on in their life. And it's about them and what they want to communicate to mm -hmm. their fans. So I'm, I listen to them. We talk. And again, a lot of it comes from just talking because yeah. maybe they have an idea of what they want to do. Or maybe I have an idea, but through talking, we discover this whole new area. Yeah. Uh, and we'll kind of go veer down that path. So again, they'll, they'll we'll, we'll talk through it and then um, try to sculpt it from there. 
Uh, and where are you from? I grew up in England, mm -hmm. but I was born in D.C. So I'm a little all over. My parents are American, but I grew up in, well, we moved to Sweden for two years. Okay. Um, my sister was born there. And then from there to England, and then England to Boston, and then Boston to LA. I'm like trying to pinpoint <laughs> yeah. your accent. And there's like, no there's so, pinpointing. Like, but it's like you say, pa. <laughs> like I'm yeah. trying to like figure out where you, I'm like, okay, now it makes sense. Very fractured. I can't, you very know, cool. the dropping of the A is half gloss. <laughs> can't, I can't get rid of that. You have like Bostonian <laughs> and like British. And it's a big <laughs> mess. <laughs> no, it's not a mess. It's very unique. It's awesome. So how long have you been in LA now? I've been in LA about eight years. Okay. Since I think 2000, end of 2011. Yeah. yeah. And then now, I mean, you're the biggest, I, uh, one of your biggest accomplishments has been working with Bryce Vine. Mm -hmm. um, congratulations on Drew Barrymore and La La Land. And his album just came out, what, three, a few days ago? Yeah, the 26th. Yeah, so, how has that been, the process of working with him? And how'd you guys meet? It's been great. Well, we met in college um, and became friends in Berkeley College of Music. Um, just making music together. We were in a band together back then. Really? Yeah. Okay. And He's that, like a homie. He's like yeah, a buddy. Yeah, day one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And uh, we did a lot of, we played a lot of small shows. We got to see what the bottom of the barrel looks like in the beginning. Yeah. You know, really, hand, you know, we would, uh, you know, s hand out tickets on the street, flyers, leaflets, do all that kind of stuff. And uh, that's when I really started getting into songwriting and production because we would, uh, make the songs and and we had another member of the group who's actually uh, one of the members of the Lost Kings DJ group and uh, They would make music together and I'd kind of oversee it and help out where I could and I really got I fell in love with that process Yeah, and I realized I wasn't Meant for the stage as much as I was meant for the studio So him and I kind of created a sparked our creative relationship back in college and then when we moved out to LA we started to evolve it and as I kind of became to understand the industry more and how things work i you know helped bryce bring him under my wing and um started creating music that we both thought represented him and grew the brand slowly but surely and here we are five yeah. six years later you know with well, the sound major is release. fantastic and Thank obviously you. that's a lot to do with you i know it's a team effort but but it's very very cool i was he was just in vegas uh was it last weekend or the weekend before probably he flies around a lot right yeah now. yeah yeah he performed at the flamingo we were like trying to go oh, to okay. his show i love but the flamingo my <laughs> flight didn't land in time anyways it was a long story but um so yeah congratulations on everything that you're Thank doing you. with him and i have a fun game that i want to play with you if that's okay i'm ready all right so 